So for the better part of like eight years now, I've been using the FabFilter Pro Q EQ. I started with the original and I upgraded to the Pro Q2 and upgraded to the Pro Q3. You guys have seen this on countless videos. And anytime I needed any sort of transparent EQ, this was the one that I went with. Well, I've just found one that beats it. It beats it sonically, it beats it in options and workflow, the amount of versatility that it has. It also beats it in price, unfortunately, meaning it's it's more expensive. This video is not sponsored. I paid for this plugin. No one's paying me to make this video or say these things about this plugin. But when I heard it for the first time, I kind of couldn't believe it. And I had no idea that the fab filter sounded the way that it sounded until I heard this EQ. So today I want to show you this EQ, talk about all its features, let you listen to it and hear the difference between the fab filter and this one. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, so to me, the best way to show you guys the difference and the thing that I think is the biggest drastic difference between the sonic characteristics is kind of the resonances of the EQ. And you can really hear this when you do a big boost and you kind of sweep it around and you can really hear how much resonance the fab filter has and how much less of it this Kirchhoff, Kerchief, Kerch, Kerch, I think it's Kerchhoff, right? Kirchhoff, yes. You'd think I would have figured that out before I hit record. So this Kirchhoff EQ you can get from Plugin Alliance. Again, not sponsored. They have no idea I'm making this video. I paid for this plugin with my own money. No one's, there's no sponsor on this video. But to me, the best way to tell the sonic differences here is to do a big boost and sweep it around. So uh, let's start, let's start with snare drum. Uh, let's start actually with the Pro Q3. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this boost and then we're gonna get to all the features because the quantity of things that this Kirchhoff EQ does is crazy. It's way more in depth than the Fab Filter, but for right now, we'll talk about that in a minute. For right now, we're gonna focus on the sonics of it. How does it sound? Here we go. So we're gonna take this on, uh, we got a 12 dB boost. Uh, on a snare drum here, and I'm gonna sweep this around, and I want you to listen to like the resonances, like the tinniness and in, in, like the texture of this snare drum as I sweep this boost around. Here we go. Now I've always thought that sounded fine, but let's do the same thing with the Kirchhoff. This is the same boost, and I'm gonna sweep it exactly the same way. Here we go. Let's see how much more natural the bleed sounds. Go back to the fab filter. Especially right in there, like that 2500. You know what, let's match these actually. Let's take these two boosts and let's match them. 2500 Hertz and let's just bounce back and forth between them. Here we go. I'm gonna just get rid of these so we're not looking at it. Uh, fab filter. Kirchhoff. Now to me, I don't know how much this is gonna come through on YouTube compression, but to me there is significantly less resonance on the Kirchhoff than there is the Pro, the, the Fab Filter. It just sounds much, much more natural. Let's take a listen on uh, kick drum and vocals real quick, and then we'll get into all the other features that this EQ do has, because the quanti again, the quantity of stuff that this thing does is, is crazy. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Here's a kick drum. We're gonna sweep it around. Here we go. Switch to the Kirchhoff, here we go. Whoa, here's uh, here's one feature 
is that you can infinitely resize it, which I absolutely love. Here we go. Back to the fab filter. Like to my ears, let's go for let's go for 2K right there and then let's switch back and forth. For my ears, the fab filter sounds like hollow and phasey compared to the kick drum. And we're just gonna go 2K here. And let's flip back and forth between them. They're both the same volume, but all of it's the same. Same slopes, everything. Here we go. Yeah, to me, the fab filter sounds hollow and phasey in comparison. Okay, let's get over to some vocals here. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna sweep this around on this vocal. Here we go. I might be finally numb and finally having fun and finally over everything she did to me. She's history, I can't believe how dumb I was to call it love. Now I ain't drinking cause of- Okay. Now let's do the same thing with the fab filter. Here we go. I might be finally numb and finally having fun and finally over everything she did to me. She's history. I can't believe how dumb I was to call it love. Especially again in that like 1500 to 2500 range. That's just, that's a big deal. Let's, let's again, let's go 2500 on this one and then... Let's go 2,500 on this one, and then let's A, B. And the reason why I'm choosing this frequency is because it kind of, to my ears, it's the easiest to hear the difference in this frequency spectrum. Okay, so here we go. Pro Q3. I might be finally numb and finally having fun and finally over everything. I might be finally numb and finally having fun and finally over everything she did to me. She's history. To me, it's just much smoother, much less resonances, much less scratchy, much more natural. Okay, so in my mind, that settles it. I think this EQ sounds better. But what about the features? Now, one of the craziest features to me is, uh, well, first of all, let's start with the obvious. Infinitely resizable. This is something that the fab filter should have. There's no reason why every EQ doesn't have this. Now there are some cons to this EQ and I'm gonna get to those as well. Some things I like better about the fab filter, but let's just start with this. Uh, the biggest change is completely complete control over the dynamic EQ. So you click this little D button here and it opens up an entire uh, parameters, all the parameters for dynamic EQ. Now this is one thing that I always wish the fab filter have. There's no adjustable attack and release settings on the fab filter dynamic section of the EQ. So here we have fully adjustable attack, fully adjustable release. You can compress it or expand it, and it works awesome. Its own uh, its own uh, uh, threshold control. Here we go. I might be finally numb and finally having fun and finally over everything she did to me. She's history. I can't believe how dumb. I mean, to me, this is like. It sounds fine. It's obviously a very transparent uh, dynamic EQ, but the adjustability and the effect that you can adjust the attack and the release and the threshold and the range instantly just puts it way above the fab filter. So uh, same with the fab filter. You've got, uh, you can EQ the left and the right, the left and the right, the mid, the side, or the mid side. Um, and then you've got your different ranges here. So that way you can see your different your different ranges. Uh, like when I'm mastering, I'm always on 3 dB because I'm moving, I'm using very slight EQ moves. Maybe if you're crushing something, you go up to 30 dB. Over here in the character, you have got 
all you've got minimum analog mix and linear so this is also a linear eq so that's very good i think the analog sounds great it's a little bit got a little bit more character just a tiny bit less transparent but then when you go over here to the shape and you can change this on each band individually you go over here to the shape for the most part, same as the fab filter. We got bell, low shelf, high pass, uh, high shelf, low pass, notch, band pass, all the tilt shelf, which is very cool, a flat tilt, a flat top. But then we get into the character EQs and you've got all these different type E EQs, type G EQs, you've got the Neve style curves. I mean, just like vintage tube, the tone stack, the blue, uh, the miscellaneous, like, crazy, crazy versatile. It would take, this video would be an hour long if I actually dug into every single thing that every one of these does. You've also got oversampling here. You've also got look ahead for your for your dynamic EQ, which is crazy. You can change here the, the uh, resolution of all this stuff. And also in the actual settings, you can change all kinds of stuff like your preferences, whether you want something to default as a bell or a shelf or a high pass or whatever, your knob speed, you can change the GUI, you can change the themes, like it's just, it's endless. It's really, really endless. So again, I can't possibly go through everything this EQ does in this video because it would be an hour long. But what I would suggest you guys do is uh, I'll put a link to this down below. It's not an affiliate link. I don't make any money off of this, uh, but I'll put a link down below so you can go check this plugin out and they have a free trial. You can download it for free, play around with it yourself. This has become my new go-to EQ for anything transparent E kind of honestly. Now I did say there were some cons. What kind of cons are we talking about? Well, uh, it's not as seamless as the fab filter. The fab filter, the way it looks and the way that it adjusts when you move parameters is very polished and very seamless. It's kind of the fab filter thing. This is a little bit more rough around the edges when you're adjusting stuff. Uh, and it, it looks more rough around the edges. It, it doesn't look as polished, but functionality wise and sonically, I think, I think it's incredible. I think it's absolutely incredible. And this is what I've been using now for a couple, three or four weeks on everything instead of the fab filter. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, drop me a comment, leave me a like on this one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this helps you. I hope that this helps you make better music. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.